John Fetterman was treated poorly to say the least uh, during his interview with NBC News. That interview was conducted by Dasha Burns uh, and she's now putting out a statement kind of backtracking after she has received a flood of criticism for her ableist language and tone. I wanna to go to that first, cuz that's the latest in this story. As Aaron Rupar tweeted, MSNBC's Dasha Burns says she has spoken to stroke experts and they say these are side effects that do not indicate any sort of cognitive impairment for Fetterman. Now, why would she have to put that statement out there? Well. It's because of how she handled the interview and what she said prior to sharing the interview with Fetterman, who of course is running for a Senate seat in Pennsylvania. And it's important to keep in mind he's running against Mehmet Oz, who is a shell of a man who has no values, no principles, no real political ideology, and is such an extreme narcissist that all he wants is the political power. None of the responsibilities that come along with it. Oh, by the way, his company did medical experiments on dogs that led to dogs dying. It's another important thing to keep in mind about this guy. But nonetheless, last night, NBC News aired this interview between Dasha Burns and Pennsylvania Senate candidate John Fetterman. Both during and after the interview, Burns repeatedly questioned whether he'd be fit to serve. As you guys know, Fetterman unfortunately suffered a stroke. He is still recovering from that stroke based on medical experts who have weighed in on the matter. The timeline of his recovery is normal, he is doing well. But journalists and other stroke survivors are coming to Fetterman's defense after Dasha Burns did a hatchet job on him. Now, Burns and Fetterman spent a good chunk of time talking about crime in Pennsylvania and a bit of time talking about other issues. But the vast majority of Burns's questions were about Fetterman's stroke. And you also have to think about the backdrop here. The backdrop is Oz constantly viciously attacking Fetterman over the fact that he had a stroke. And of course, Oz as a Republican candidate has no problem using all sorts of disgusting ableist uh, language in attacking him. Early on in the interview, Fetterman actually did a great job explaining that just because he has trouble hearing and speaking does not mean that he has any issues with his cognitive abilities or his reasoning. Okay, so let's take a quick look at that. What has that recovery process been like? How has it changed your day to day experience? The, the, it's it's everything, it changes everything. To be precise, I use captioning. So that's really the major, that's the major challenge. And every now and then I'll miss a word every now and then. Or sometimes I'll maybe mush two words together. But as soon as I have captioning, I'm able to understand exactly what's being asked. But even after the stroke, immediately after that, I was able to read everything and I haven't lost any memories or anything like that. It's just really the lingering issue that I have. So you'll note that Fetterman has a screen right in front of him and that displays captions of Burns's questions so he could read them. Now following that question and his answer, Burns pressed Fetterman over and over again on why he hasn't released his medical records. Keep in mind, by the way, he has been incredibly transparent about his stroke, about his condition, about his recovery process. He has shared a letter from his doctor indicating that he's doing well, he's recovering well, but that's not good enough. When are we gonna see your medical records? Where are your medical records? Let's watch. We've asked for your medical records. We've asked to have a conversation with someone from your medical team to interview your physician. You've declined those requests, why? Well, I feel like we have been very transparent in a lot of different ways. When our doctor has already given a letter saying that I'm able to serve, and to, to be uh, running. And then I think there's, you can't be any more transparent than standing up on a stage with 3,000 people and having a, a speech without a teleprompter and just being and putting everything and yourself out there like that. I think that's as transparent as everyone in Pennsylvania can, can see. I thought that was a great answer. Um, but we do have one more video that I want to show you, and then I want to get your thoughts, Sean, because. 
It wasn't good enough for Dasha Burns. She goes on to ask the same question many more times and Fetterman basically gives the same answer. And then after the interview, and this is the part that just, it upset many people, let's just put it that way. Burns continued to express concern about his health and that's what you're about to watch. Lester, in small talk before the interview without captioning, it wasn't clear he was understanding our conversation. How is it not clear that he was understanding your conversation? I mean, we just saw portions of that interview where it's abundantly clear that he has no issues with his cognitive abilities. Well, so that is clear. What she's saying is it wasn't clear that he was understanding it without the captions, but he's already told you he needs the captions right now. So I don't know why As that's a revelation to you. Yes, I mean, yeah, he wants to have the captions. He has auditory processing issues right now, and so he wants the captions. So without the captions, it would be like someone who had never met someone in a wheelchair. It was like, oh, you gotta explain this chair thing. Okay, oh, I have follow up questions about this chair thing. And then you report back to the anchor like, it wasn't clear that he could walk without that chair thing. That's what a disability is. Like I don't know if she has only ever cavorted around with angelic beings who are perfectly fit in body and mind, but I'm gonna blow her mind right now. There are people who can't hear even as well as him. There are people who can't hear at all. There are people who can't see at all, who can't speak at all. There's a variety of disabilities. Well, they're not that fit to doesn't serve. mean that they're not fit to serve, according to Dasha Burns. You know, if you might want to run for Congress one day, but you have a disability like blindness, you might be deaf. You're just not fit to serve. Sorry. What if you? Sorry. What if you're paralyzed? I mean, no, but well, I mean, come on. Can you really serve? It's if you can't walk. If you can't do a, a kip up, can I mean, you really serve? One of the greatest presidents, if not the greatest president in United States history, was a disabled president, FDR. Okay, uh, her handling and her commentary. Let's just keep it real because that's what this is. While the media, including you know outlets like NBC. They love to present themselves as like the standard bearers of fair and objective journalism, right? Mm -hmm. But she is, in the way she's handling this, injecting her opinion into this story. Yeah. She is communicating to the audience that she doesn't believe that he's fit to serve due to this temporary, temporary disability. And even if it weren't temporary, if we're dealing with someone who might need to read captions to understand the questions, whatever, for uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? For a longer period of time, sure. that doesn't mean that they're unfit to serve. Some people have disabilities, but they might be great candidates, great leaders. I mean, are we really having this conversation right now? We literally have a United States Senator who has severe dementia. Okay, I mean, we're, we're really having this conversation mm -hmm. right now? Yeah, look, you, you saw him in the video. He, yes, he needs to read the captions. And then once he's read the captions, he's, he's, fine. Perfectly, like he's perfectly lucid. I don't know. Like, it's not as if, okay, there could be reason for concern following a stroke. A stroke could be so bad that it could result in you being unable to think or whatever. It could affect you in a way that you might come out the other side. I don't know, like uh, hawking mountain berries that give instantaneous weight loss for a bunch of years or something. Or it could result in you thinking that you know better than 98% of the world's climate scientists about whether climate change is actually happening. There are a bunch of things. It could result in you, I don't know, thinking that you live in Pennsylvania when you live in New Jersey. Like it could result in some sort of mental issues, but you can't present the evidence of that issue. So they're doing effectively what mm -hmm. they did in the final weeks of the 2016 election to Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. They're never gonna say he can't serve. They're just gonna raise questions and yeah. they're just gonna raise more questions. And the story is gonna be about whether there's questions, whether you should be uncomfortable. If you want to make a claim, make the claim, okay? If not, let the Republican candidate do it. It's not on your job to run PR for Dr. Oz. Again, just because someone is having some auditory issues does not mean that their cognition is impaired. That is important to understand. She is not a medical expert. She felt the need to inject her own opinion in what she probably thought was a subtle way, but it was not so subtle. I'm really happy to see that she's now backtracking and you know, 
changing her to I've I've now decided to speak to some medical experts. Uh, but before she did, there were other people in the media space who called her out and said, you're full of it. Uh, let's start with Kara Swish, uh, Swisher who says, sorry to say, but I talked to John Fetterman for over an hour without stop or any aids. And this is just nonsense. Maybe this reporter is just bad at small talk. Uh, Swisher also says, I was expecting a lot worse in presentation from John Fetterman since stroke victims often only lose the ability to express, but not to think clearly. By the way, many fully functional subjects do worse. So a hot take from network small talk pregame isn't a diagnosis I'm going to trust. We also have another journalist, Rebecca Traster, who says, as someone who has recently interviewed him, Fetterman's comprehension is not at all impaired. He understands everything. It's just that he reads it, which requires extra acuity, I'd argue, and responds in real time. It's a hearing slash auditory processing challenge. And then this was a great response to Burns's tweet as well. Okay, this is from Kendall Brown. Your job as a reporter is also to adequately contextualize things and not perpetuate harmful stereotypes. Disability isn't disqualifying and basic disability accommodation shouldn't be treated as some shocking revelation. Shame on you for helping further stigmatize our community. Exactly. I really appreciated that tweet. And all right, fine, a few more, a few more good ones. Parker Malloy, I, I really like this one. Pretty wild how Chuck Grassley and Diane Feinstein almost certainly don't even know what year it is and are basically being weekend at Bernie'd through their time in office by staff. But a candidate needing closed captioning is what has political reporters freaking out. So that's a little stronger and it's a reference I was trying to make a little earlier. Mm-hmm. And again, because of reality, hitting Dasha Burns real hard at the moment. She has kind of reversed some of her language here. MSNBC's Dasha Burns says she has spoken to stroke experts. Should have done that ahead of time. That would have been a good call. Yeah, and they say these are side effects that do not indicate any sort of cognitive impairment to Fetterman. Man. It's 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 because of who he is and the positions that he holds. That's what 100%. there's always going to be more questioning. I mean, it has a positive. He's gotten some positive press for those same reasons from time to time, but in compare, like I understand. God forbid anyone wants to ensure that we all have health care and we don't go bankrupt from medical emergencies. God forbid. Yeah. Because that's when the claws come out with the corporate media. God forbid moneyed interests have to pay a little more in taxes. God forbid.